my day here at Freedom Elementary starts at 6.50 in the morning. So upon arrival, I make sure, you know, my mask is in place, check in, I take my temperature, make sure that that is in accordance to uh, CVC guidelines. I also do our Dr. Owl check-in, which, you know, asks the, the survey questions as far as if I have any symptoms of uh, the temperature. And that allows me entry to give me a check-off that I'm allowed to come in. I have uh, buses coming in. Students start coming off. We get them off one at a time. And I have personnel there taking their temperature, asking them Dr. Owl questions and then making sure that before they get off the bus that they have you know, the, prop, uh, the appropriate amount of hand sanitizer. At 7.15, our drop-offs begin to take place. So parents come to the front of the school. We ensure that they've done Dr. Owl and our campus nurse, Ms. Garcia, welcomes our student, takes their temperature, and you know, asks also the parents if they've done their Dr. Owl check-in each morning. I still give out medications throughout the day. You know, we still have kids that have chronic illnesses that I need to take care of. Masks, you know, they come, they have to be wearing a mask, they tear, they get wet, so we're giving masks throughout the day. It's pretty much everything we used to do as school nurses, plus now, you know, the COVID testing and uh, they're pulling us out to go to the vaccine clinics. So it's, it's a lot. The majority of the time, well, the kids are in their classrooms with the teachers, so the teachers are the ones really in charge of like, hey, you know, don't get too close. And when they're walking in the halls, there's stickers on the floor. I don't know if you notice that there's stickers six feet away. So they stay on those, um, on their stickers. In the cafeteria, they're, they're, um, they're sitting side by side. They're not sitting across each other anymore. And they're also like one per bench, where it used to be two students per bench. So, and in the classrooms, they still have their, their shields, but they are required to wear their face masks. And friends, and friends, who's from the story, background knowledge, My face-to-face -face kiddos now, I have a total of eight. So I have about half my class here with me face-to-face. -face, and the other eight uh, are virtual. Um, so some things that have been super different here in the classroom, of course, obvious, we wear masks. They also have the clear desk shields that we would, wouldn't typically have. And then of course, you know, those kiddos that don't log in at all has been even more of a challenge because we can only reach so far through a telephone call or a dojo message. And as a teacher, that, that hurts the most because you know your job is to prepare these kids for the next grade and it's out of your hands. So it's difficult because I think of how to solve all the problems I have with curriculum and, you know, okay, I'll reteach this skill and I'll reteach this and I'll teach it a different way. But then when it's kind of, you've reached your limit of, I've already tried everything I can to get this kid to come to school. It's a whole nother problem that I've really had to work through this year. Time to come back, tell your neighbors, tell your, your tias, tus madrinas, tus abuelas. Gotta go back to school, it's time. Yes or yes? Yes! Yeah. Great job, so welcome to the Despite the different challenges that we faced for the last year, it is my priority that I keep my faculty, my staff, and most importantly, my students safe. But at the end of the day, I need to ensure that my teachers have the proper tools, the proper equipment, the proper staff development to ensure our student success. Because my students, they're gonna grow. They're gonna be successful. They are gonna be active and productive members of society. And we're gonna ensure that that happens.